Sunday is at six. Sarge, did you say you want us to eat oats? You're a nut. Whoever has a human beings don't eat oats. Who eats oats? There comes a time in every soldier's life he's got to do something beyond the call of duty. Now, did you men ever think what your share of a million dollars is going to be? What about that? <laughs> He was a hell of a character, that Vilko, wasn't he? It was like seeing somebody I don't know. Was it? Yes. Really? Mm -hmm. What about that, one of my favourite characters among that motley crew you had there was that Private Doberman, the slob of the century, wasn't it? Well, that's, uh, <laughs> that was a marvellous accident. We had a, an open call where everybody could come, you know, right. when we were framing the show. And the creator, Nat Hyken, the comic genius, you know, and we were a good team because I would sense him sometimes he'd go way overboard and he looked at Dobrin <coughs> excuse me and fell in love with him and gradually we gave him a little more to do and a little more to do now Doberman whose real name was uh, uh, I forgot but I love the name Dwayne Doberman you know mm. Dwayne Doberman he didn't know what he was when he became very popular and he'd ask the children, you know, would ask for all Yes, I'll give you an autograph, little man. He thought he was Cary Grant playing the part of a fat fellow. <laughs> <laughs> and he was, uh, <clears throat> he lived the way people thought I lived. I mean, he didn't miss a cocktail party. And, and there's something about when I'd have to go to do a benefit someplace or a charity show, he was the safest to take along for the trip, the quickest. And invariably, we'd make these plane trips. I'd get to the place, <clears throat> and the next night would be the show, and then would walk Doberman, one of the stewardesses. I don't know, women, some women dig distortion. He, <laughs> I mean, he was living like people thought. I, I was home rehearsing, alone in a bathrobe. He was out swinging. Oh, I must tell you one thing. There was a darling lady, British actress. God rest her soul, I loved her. She was, she was really the epitome of, of fluff and happiness. And that was the late Kay Kendall. Oh, yeah. She asked to be on our show. Drove us crazy. She, she was then Mrs. Rex Harrison. Kay Kendall wants to be on our show. So Nat, who was very quick, uh, completely wrote a script which had to do with me being a British officer. I posed, you know, with the salute. So she'd come to our group. She was on an entertainment tour, you know? But I tried to get her to entertain and I can't. That was basically the thought. Well, we were instant television. We had three cameras, and we were, in, in a sense, live television. Because we never stopped for mistakes, even if they came. Unless it was a big mistake, you know, like a piece of scenery falling. And I uh, never went to lunch, because I found I faded. Uh, during the day, but the day we shot, I'd stay in. But there was a little Italian restaurant that they all went to. As I said to Kay, I said, Kay, go with the boys. Excuse me for not going with you. I don't go out to lunch. But you'll have a jolly good time. And this Italian restaurant used to have a little table set for our crew. And the boys bought wine. They all saluted Kay and then down to the business of eating because they had to be back in the studio. But nobody told her about Doberman. It's a compulsive eater, you know? <laughs> he had uh, a, a hero sandwich on this arm he was working on, and two meatballs on a fork here, <laughs> and the wine gone here, and the thing all over the year, I'm gone. <laughs> about nine things were going at once, and Kate, I had, at a certain moment, turned and saw this. <laughs> and she froze, and Henshaw one of my corporals, wonderfully humorous boy. He saw Kay's amazement, and he tapped her and he said, remember, he's working without a net. <laughs> I 
was, I was amused to read in the book too that you recall that he was so slobby that the uh, crew used to have bets on how many of his fly buttons were undone when he walked on set. Oh, when we made my personal appearances. Yeah. 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 And after getting Las Vegas, uh, he knew nothing about cameras. He, he thought everybody should faint, you know, when they saw him. I said, tell you. He thought, you know, and he wore a, a beach shaker with the varicose veins in his big stomach. It was really... <laughs> and there was a dice game going on, a big game. There was about $40,000 on each row. Uh, some visiting faction had come to buck the game in this hotel I was playing at. And Dobman came in from the pool in a kind of a little beach jacket, and he had a tubercular silver dollar in his hand or something. And he figured everybody should faint, because there he is. And he walked up, and he says, I'm with you. And he leaned over this four deep they were, and he put the silver dollar down, the dice hit his hand, came up a seven and wiped out all the numbers, you know? <laughs> Well, everybody was indignant, including the dealers. They said, so the least you could do is get up close. You should have excused it, but whatever they said. And he looked at him and his full five foot three, you know, in such disdain. He says, why, you run this like a drugstore. And he walked away. <laughs> that shows a well, they were a great bunch of lads. Mm. It showed in the show. We worked very hard. We rehearsed very hard. Mm. And uh, the only one who miscues was Doberman. Yeah. We protected him. You don't know this, but he never did too much. No. Long speeches, because he couldn't handle it. <laughs> and he had excuses by when he blew a scene, you know. I'd say, oh, for God's sake, Dwayne, why do you dip? I mean, it's an affront for you to all of us. You know you're supposed to come. And then he says, Sarge, I tripped on a piece of paper. <laughs> I never heard that one. <laughs> Once he was late for rehearsal, <clears throat> keeping us waiting, and he said a priest short hopped him for a cab. <laughs> <laughs> what did you mean, Dolman? <laughs> do, you, do you find that uh, wherever you go now, Phil, though, that you are uh, recognized as, as Bill Phil? I think I'll never live that down. I don't say that disparagingly because. But like in this country, they don't know. I've done five smash Broadway musicals yes, and great special shows. Mm. But Bilko is my... Uh, I've always been Bilko in everything I did. Mm. The only thing is that in Bilko, I wore a uniform. And if somebody... I sometimes talk to college groups, drama groups, and I can't presume to say that I know my art and, and discuss it. It's instinctive. And I'm very good at answering questions. Mm. I used to say to the, to the drama, ask me a question, and if it isn't about Shakespeare, which would be presumptuous, because I don't, that's another world. But when I'm saying something on the stage, the most ridiculous thing, I believe it. Because mm. if I didn't believe it, it'd be like jumping from one building to another and changing your mind halfway across. Yes. yes. I think the title of my book, which I wanted to have, and they wouldn't do it, is... Comedy is no laughing matter. Yes. Is, that, is this why? Because I mean, the great comedians have to work so very hard at it, and because it's such a precarious job, such a difficult thing to make it laugh. Is that why so many comedians are neurotic and indeed neurotic? I think so. They shouldn't be, because it's a great gift. I'm one of them. I'm the, oh, I'm the king. But uh, <laughs> the doubt of it uh, is what makes you neurotic, I think. Let me see if I can explain that, Mike. Uh, a great dramatic actor, a great comedian. Give the comedian a bit of the better of it in your evaluation of sympathy. Not sympathy, they make a lot of money. I don't mean sympathy, I mean understanding. Here's what I mean, maybe this will make sense. You go to a dramatic show, you're a star of a dramatic show. You have the assurance, because it's a big hit, there's an audience tonight. They're fighting for tickets, sleuth, or whatever, you know? You're also in a big comedy, and they're buying tickets. What assurance do you have to laugh tonight? Hmm. That's why comedians are half nuts. Yes. That little doubt. Yes. But it shouldn't be. It's immature of me to take that attitude towards it. Yes. But that's the only way I can explain it. Yes. But I mean, does 